Hello and welcome to round 11 of the Bozra MSA GT3 Championship. Coming to you this week from Twin Reed Motegi East. Super technical tight track. My name's Jason Dilworth. I'm joined here for the first time in the comms box by Paul Martin. And uh, you're going to take us through qualifying results, aren't you, Paul? Thanks very much, Jace. So, in first position with a time of 119.7 is Tony Bird in the Acorn Britain Audi. Behind him is yourself, Jason, with a close time of 119.768. Next, we have Barry Bird in the Acorn Britain Audi, closely followed by Craig Parks. Next up, we have in fifth place is Ben Hackinson in the Seagate Mercedes. Behind him, Simon Underhill in the BMW Synology team. Next is Neil Bamber in the BMW Seagate, Phil Gregory in the Bodden Solutions Mercedes, and followed by Taylor Lane in the RD Privateer team. Next up is in 16th place is John Ferrisford in the Motorsport Auctions BMW with a time of 122.2. Next up is Daniel Bailey, the Privateer, David Rowland in the Synology Audi, Martin Brandon in the Bowden Solutions Audi and Alan McCain with no time in the BMW Motorsport Sports Auctions. Yeah, some pretty interesting stats there. Chris Butterill making it into the top 10 in qualifying for potentially the first time and Alan not being able to set a time. Uh, so that's some people in different positions to usual. Pretty interesting. Brilliantly done, by the way, Paul. Great to have you along. Uh, for those of you watching who haven't followed us on Facebook, or Twitter, you can see the details there and obviously subscribe to this YouTube channel. Without further ado though, we'll head to the grid and I'm thinking this is going to be a pretty good race, Paul, what do you think? Yeah, pretty interesting, it's quite hot and sticky uh, for tonight's race, so it'll be interesting to see how the tyre wear goes. Off they go and straight away, that's a great start from Taylor Lane, looking to go around the outside, but it's all going to get very busy going into this Turn 1, which is pretty icy as you mentioned. Simon Annahill making it three wide between Craig and Ben Hackerson and there's contact. But everyone seems to be getting on with it though. Yeah, he was sandwiched there between Ben and uh, Craig. Don't think he could have gone anywhere. Yeah, it looked like he was very late on the brakes, which is <laughs> very Simon, but uh, it, that's just something that happens in Turn 1. It is it's from very, the very tight Turn 1. It is really tight. He's just gone for the gap. There was nowhere else for him to go, so... Um, just one of those things, but Phil's managed to do pretty well out of that. Managing uh, to see, hold off Chris. Looking ahead, looks like Craig's recovered um, not too bad. He's straight on the back again, that position back again. Yeah, that's it, and then looks like there was a slowdown up ahead somewhere. Anyway, on, well, we're looking back at John Beresford with and yourself. Trying to make that move all into the first corner and a little touch. Yeah. Cold brakes, cold tyres, it's uh, you get a bit uh, the when the adrenaline's pumping. Yeah, this is still very early on, so and another touch. Oh that's uh, unfortunate. That's not the first time I've seen uh, John carry on having his nose in there and that's a pretty interesting way of getting back onto the track as well. So the self and John are quite like yourself and Simon where we uh, always seem to be qualifying in a round each hour and always in a round each hour on the race so yeah you're bound to touch every now and again but that was a great move by uh, Taylor on Phil Gregory there Excellent. really late uh, on the brakes straight on the bar oh, oh yeah and a bad spin by Jan yeah Maziva having a bit of a time of it all on his own unfortunately little look like right hand rear on the grass and then you've got no traction here Rolf. we have Dan Bailey and Rolf. Yeah, Rolf making the move down the inside. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Dan I Bailey. Think, uh, Go on. I think Dan's just concentrating on having a, uh, a decent clean race and he's been making up his positions by staying on track and not taking any risks. This was an interesting moment. Tony just losing the rear out of nowhere and uh, luckily avoiding any major damage by the looks of it but I thought you were going to follow him there <laughs> <laughs> at the time I felt like I was because it's really difficult not to sort of lock onto a target and follow someone off but there we go John Beresford on board with him following Dave Rowland he's yeah he's just got too deep in the bricks yep bit of a slide on as well through turn two tough little section this 
It's, um, I was watching actually the MotoGP last weekend here and it is more of a uh, bike track. Yeah, it's very much a bike track. But I, I loved it, really. I thought I was going to hate this track, but really enjoyed it after a while. And Tony on one of his recovery drives. Yep, with taking Ben. Taking the place from Ben, who's obviously had that first lap incident. And struggling for pace at this point. Five laps in. Yeah, I think Ben's just in damage limitation mode at the minute. Keep that championship uh, lead as much yeah. as possible. Absolutely. Brings quite a decent lead into here at the moment, but with... Craig out uh, in the front, he's going to be, as you say, on damage limitation mode. Back on board with Dave Rowland, hopefully keeps it on the track. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, no. Oh, that was unfortunate. Bit of a loss of traction halfway through. He seemed to gain it and then got back on the power a little bit too enthusiastically. And there the you go. just doesn't, doesn't seem to have any warning when it's going to do that to you. Yeah, I've heard drivers of all the cars saying that. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things. And they well avoided, got to say. <laughs> like that was going to be a massive accident between you three. I, I think Jan was more concentrating on, on Daniel. And I managed to take advantage <laughs> of that. It ends up being a really good opportunistic move, I'm impressed. <laughs> on board, looking back from Neil Bamba at Simon Underhill. One you know firsthand what it's like to have the Synology car in the, the rear wing. <laughs> Yeah, he's made a bit of a mistake there, so uh, not giving Neil any trouble there, but he's going to be trying to hold Ben off and taking the place back, or trying to from Tony, and does it successfully by the looks of Nice oh, no. move. Uh, so nearly a nice move, but Tony's really good at hooking up out of corners, so he manages to keep that position. I think Ben might actually be just suffering a bit of error damage. He just doesn't seem to be quite on the, um, on the pace coming out of the corners. Yeah, it does look that way. Up to lap eight now, and Tony again making another move. Little tap by the looks of it mid corner with Neil, but that was probably a zero X incident, if anything. Gets the Simon's hard on the tail. Yeah, absolutely. Neil, it seems that he uh, suffered a bit from that little touch. Put him off mid corner. And Simon's right on his tail. As you said, this is a great little battle between these four. Oh, oh. Simon with the underhill and keeps it on the track. Oh, that's a, oh, it's a tailor lead. Yeah, collects Taylor. I'm not sure. I'd have to see that again to make a judgment on it. Looked like Neil probably expected Taylor to go on the inside, but here we go. Another, another overtake from yourself. No wonder you wanted to commentate on this one. Oh, I want to commentate in the next race too. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent work. <laughs> no, well, I have to say that was that was Martin. Brandon, was it? I didn't notice, but yeah, I'll take your word for it. But he gave plenty of room, you know, and you know, just made it pretty straightforward. He knew, I think he knew but I had a bit more pace. Yeah, yeah. Well, here we go. Uh, this is lap 12, and... Um, not what you want to see? Well, I was, I, I was hoping we'd see a bit of me leading at some point, because uh, it doesn't it doesn't happen very often. Um, but there we go, I'm in the lead. But uh, a very fast Craig Parks closing me down there. The interesting thing with uh, Craig is if he hasn't got you in pace, more than likely he has you on the strategy. If yeah. he is... He's, uh, he's a approaching unbeatable really, uh, but uh, he definitely is beatable, he's been beaten a couple of times this season, but he doesn't feel very beatable when he's chasing you down. <laughs> anyway, Dave Rowland having another little uh, issue there and deciding to take it into the pits for one of his fast repairs. And his car has taken some beating. Yeah, he really has, that's not a pretty looking BMW anymore though, that lovely Seagate livery taking an absolute smashing, but uh, looking forward from his car now, and is he going to touch? No, he's managed to keep it stopped. Those Mercs, they, uh, you know yourself, driving one, you have to brake super early in comparison to the BMWs, and that looked like it nearly took Neil by surprise. He's got a good run out of the last corner, has a look, but he's a bit far back, and Neil is a very super respectful racer, so just decides to hang back and wait for the next opportunity. And here we go, it's Craig on yourself, Jason. <laughs> yep, really bad run out of the last corner from me and a good run for him. Um, ben there getting over, getting lapped, I was thinking he might help me out. <laughs> uh, it nearly did. <laughs> um, 
Craig again deciding that that's not the place to dive down the inside but gets the move pretty much done on the exit because he'd scared me completely out of the position. <laughs> Good bit of racing though and you can see that we're super close together but no touching so that's what's all right. Yeah absolutely and good to see some acorn logos nice and close up in this roundup as well tried to have a go again but uh around the outside here although fun to do just lost me loads of time on him really yeah kudos to really? craig great move i think at this stage the tires were just starting to get a bit uh on the edge of their limits i find myself having to go down in the first gear for that corner just to get any kind of traction and speed for it yeah, they, they did seem to go off quite quick here because the um, temperatures were so high. Anyway, back on board with Ben. He's recovering, but and that was for position, but Rolf just uh, letting him past. He's in his own race, ultimately. And uh, similar to Dan, just trying to make sure that he finishes the race well. That was a good little uh, camera angle, though. If you get too defensive, that you lose far too much time. Before you know it, someone you are actually racing is the right on you. Have yep. Barry here pitting. Yeah, pitting from third position. Decent run from Barry in this In race. Interesting pit entry. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty lax on uh, the penalties there at this track. So we've got. Is it Jan? Ben yeah. on Jan? Yep. Yep. Good move. Ben really uh, recovering pretty well. He's had his fast repair, obviously, at this point by the looks of it, because that car looks absolutely mint. So he's found his pace back and uh, doing his best to make sure things happen. Craig pitting. I believe I came in right behind him. I did. Um, I was trying to save fuel the whole race to make sure that I could stay out an extra lap, but it just didn't work. There you go. You see him regaining the lead. I think since uh, Craig's joined the championship, he has introduced that uh, fuel strategy even more now. Yeah, him and, and got to say, Ben Hackerson, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. definitely the one who really started thinking about it earliest, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, it does add an extra element that we don't get to really see in these roundups, but it's an interesting bit when you're racing, is trying to make sure that you're on top of your full fuel usage as well. Anyway. Good bit of footage of the Synology car of Ricky Green being chased down by Alan McCain Al at this point. Yep. Who Al McCain having a really good race, starting from the uh, back of the grid. Yep, dead last, 20th position. Now about to take that 11th position off of Ricky. Who oh. uh, got a little bit sideways on the brakes, but he's managed to keep it, so that's good. Tony uh, recovering from earlier, he's in fourth at this point in time, not sure whether he's uh, pitted, I don't think he has by the looks of it at this moment in time. Uh, yeah, I do really feel sorry for the, the bear. Oh, uh, uh, oh. Uh, just as you were saying that. <laughs> Got caught out a little bit by an early breaking Dan, but what, what were you saying? Their pace is always up there, but then converting that pace into a race win is just very unlucky at times. Yeah, they've they've got massive pace, but like you say, that Audi and Jan oh, takes another trip yeah. into the barrier. It's that same corner as he had his first issue earlier on. I'm not sure whether he just struggled with a bit of practice time for this week, but definitely That's struggling. Good. It's a pretty straight out corner, but it can, you know, if you touch any of the white or even just an extra bit of steering angle. Yeah. So you had a lapped car there, I think, with you and and an Alan McCain yeah, oh. taking. Uh, oh. Taking a dive down the inside, looked like the, the position was on, but uh, I'm not. Did you just not see him there? Or? Um, I got the car left, and then the car left went, said clear, and then I took it. <laughs> decided to go up the inside. <laughs> I was uh, I was going to give him the position anyway because he's you know I'll, I'll a second a lot quicker. Yeah, he was on an absolute mission here, and it doesn't seem to have slowed him down very much anyway. No, I just I decided to give him it. As I was saying before, the more time you end up defending a place that you're going to ultimately lose somewhere along the line. Yeah, you've got to race against the ones that you're racing against pace-wise, I guess. Ultimately, both of you carrying on, which is good to see. Ricky on screen again. Jonathan Beresford right behind him. Hopefully, John manages to be on screen on one of these roundups without chucking it 
into the side of someone. That's a really and good move. Oh. <laughs> it's, it, it's so close, John. Come on, yeah. one of these roundup videos will be able to say something super positive. Ultimately, does get the move done. Um, it's a tricky exit, you know, getting on the par, but, you know, he was left enough room. Yeah, I think, I think that move could have been cleaner, but ultimately he's made it without ruining either of their races, which is good. And it looks like this could well be the end of the race. He's, Craig's celebrating, flashing the lights before the last corner even. Just shows how commanding this victory was in the end. And a great job and takes that win of this round 11. So, fantastic yeah, job, Craig. Just unfortunate that uh, Ben had that incident in the first corner because I reckon he could have could have maybe pushed the both of us. Yeah, I had no doubt of that at all. Um, was I felt very happy with a second position. Let's put it that way. Um, felt felt like my pace wasn't probably enough to be there. So pretty happy with that. Here's um, Ben as we were speaking of him, just crawling over the line at the end here into eighth position. So actually not as bad as it could have ended up given that first corner issue. Oh, uh, well, it keeps the championship alive in the last few rounds and you know, makes it all more interesting for the people move, watching the races and also for us racing because it gives us all something extra to aim for. Absolutely. So let's run down some of those results for you then. Uh, Craig Parks, as you see, taking the victory from myself by five and a bit seconds. Then the Bar Brothers, followed by Simon Underhill and Neil Bamba see the rest of the results you want to rewind it and pause it a little bit um, so that was ultimately a very exciting race for all those involved 20 people taking part unfortunately for Chris uh, exiting pretty early on as you can see what effect has it had on the driver standings you've seen a few people move about uh, Neil Bamba and Barry Bard taking up a couple of positions mainly because Matty Van Delden didn't actually take place I don't think in that race did he no so there you go, that's how they're uh, stacking up further down the field as well. Good race for John Barrisford, he's up five positions. Yeah, good good points finish. Ultimately, we get points for the first 19 finishes, so 20 people racing, you're going to get some points. Uh, no change in position on the team standings, Acorn Printing still uh, extending that lead at the moment, but Seagate really not that far behind with uh, four races to go at this point in time. So that was round 11. Thank you very much for your assistance there, Paul. That was uh, good fun. You enjoy yourself? Yep, great. Great stuff watching the races. Yeah, good. Excellent. So next round is round 12, of course. It's at Circuit of the Americas. Much wider track than this one. Should make for some really good racing. We'll bring that round up to you as soon as possible. Thank you to all the sponsors of the Bosra MSA GT3 Championship, and we will see you next time.